hello friends today i'll start making videos on air compressor so today is the first day these compressors are used on ships so first we'll study what are the requirements for air compressors on ships first requirement is ship should have two or more air compressors having total capacity together capable of charging air receiver within one hour from atmospheric pressure to the pressure sufficient for the number of starts required by the regulation and <coughs> sorry the regulation says for reversible engine twelve starts alternate between ahead and astern and for non reversible engines six starts second thing is the capacity of main air compressor is approximately divided equally between two compressors third is temperature of air discharge to the starting <coughs> air receiver will not exceed 93 degrees celsius in service and for the safety purpose fusel plug or the alarm device operating at 121 degrees celsius is to be provided on each compressor each compressor is fitted with safety wall setting of this safety wall is such that pressure accumulation with the outlet wall close will not exceed 10% of the maximum working pressure casing of the cooling water space are to be fitted with safety wall or bursting disc to protect in the event of bursting disc of air cooler tubes now we will study about basics of air compressor basically air compressor works on polytropic graph but what we need is isothermal and there is one way, one more compression process that is adiabatic but in in uh, uh, reality in practical sense what is happening is polytropic isothermal is where temperature remains constant which follows boyle's law means the heat generated during compression is taken away by the cooling water in adiabatic process work done during compression would appear as heat energy which is stored in the air so this is the basics of compression process it follows the graph which is shown here our main objective is to compress air isothermally why do we have multi stages why not single stages so for that we have multi stages because if we have single stage that will increase the temperature which could cause lubrication problem in the cylinder and fouling of discharge wall due to oil breaking second is reduction in throughput as air temperature is is increased air becomes less dense and so mass of the air is reduced third is height compression ratio which varies small clearance volume 
Fourth is work input is reduced with multi staging. That you can that we can see from the graph. This is the this is the this is the area that is saved. That this is the work done which is saved uh, because of intercooling in between two stages. Intercooling uh, helps us to move the compression process towards isothermal. So when we have multi-staging, compressor sta com uh, compression process follows the graph as this one. Now we'll uh, study about materials which are used on air compressors. For crankcase and cylinder head, we use cast iron. For crankshaft, they are machined and ground from steel forging, running in a white metal line shell bearing. Cylinder liner is cast iron, piston, aluminium for low pressure and cast iron for high pressure. Connecting rod. Connecting rod is palm type. Bumping clearance can be adjusted with the sims. That is why palm type connecting rod is used. Machine from steel drop forging. Plate, suction discharge wall. They are made from alloy steel with the wall seat body. A seat forging and steel forging with the hardened steel. Now we will study about bumping clearance. Before that, let me tell you about volumetric efficiency, which is the actual volume of air drawn in by the swept volume. Clearance volume is very important. Clearance volume is actually the volume enclosed between top of the piston and the cylinder head when the piston is at top dead center. This clearance should be approximately 0.6 mm which is very important for efficient operation of the compressor. If this clearance is too large, the air trapped at the end of the compression stroke and delivery stroke will expand back to the suction condition before a fresh charge can be drawn which reduces volumetric efficiency. This uh, too large clearance is caused by fitting a too thick head gasket, worn bearings, incorrect shim between being fitted. If bumping clearance is too too small, piston may hit the cylinder head when the compressor is running unloaded. This happens when bottom end bearing wears down. It is caused by too thin cylinder gasket and incorrect shim fitted. Now we will study about lubrication. Lubrication is basically done in the bearings and the liners. If the lubrication is too much, carryover is, uh, sorry, if uh, too much oil is carried over, that creates a problem. Oil will oxidize and burn at temperature of discharge so that carbon deposits are formed. This reduces this reduces wall efficiency by blocking passage and reducing wall sealing. Thus, wall will also
दस वॉल विल अलाउ मोर एयर टू रिसर्कुलेट गिविंग ग्रेटर एयर टेम्परेचर ऑयल विल बी डिपॉजिटेड ऑन दी इनर एंड आफ्टर इन इंटर एंड आफ्टर कूलर विच विल रिड्यूस हीट ट्रांसफर ऑयल डिपॉजिट इन द एयर लाइन दैट कैन लीड टू स्टार्टिंग एयर लाइन एक्सप्लोजन सो थैंक यू फ्रेंड्स फॉर टूडे नेक्स्ट वीडियो आई विल अपलोड विच विल ऑल्सो ऑन कंप्रेसर एंड इट विल कंटिन्यू टिल आई फिनिश वॉट वॉट ऑल थिंग्स आई हैव लर्न अबाउट कंप्रेसर्स Thank you